Global with David Thomas, a regular video podcast that I make as I travel around global emerging markets. This issue comes from China, where we're traveling through China's first tier cities, through Beijing, here in Nanjing, and on our way to Shanghai, looking at uh, emerging opportunities in China's first and second tier cities. The big question on everyone's lips is, is China slowing down? Here's what some of our delegates had to say when I asked them during the course of our travels. Okay, is China slowing down? Yes, it is. Uh, everyone will tell you that. Should we be worried about it? Well, I guess it depends whether you're doing business here or not. Uh, is it going to be slow forever? No, of course not. We're looking at a cyclic movement. We're looking at a China that is got all the fundamentals still going in its favor. It's still growing. It's still got a lot of work to do. It's already st it's got a lot of uh, consensus still on the work that has to be done. So if you look at the medium, you look at the long term, the story hasn't changed one jot. Are we slowing down at the moment? Yes. No, China's definitely slowing down. It had to. A law of large numbers and a whole lot of other factors. And also sustainability. If you want a thing this size to keep growing, you've got to uh, grow it at the right speed. But uh, is that, does that mean disaster? Well, the second largest economy in the world, growing at 7 8 percent. How, how bad can that be? Uh, and an increment like that is still pretty prodigious. The other side of it is China's not suddenly going to become, you know, resources and energy light developmental proposition. There's a lot of people out there who don't have a house, a lot of infrastructure to be built, a lot of cities to be built just yet. So I think there's a, a lot to go on here before we have to start worrying about uh, the implications of a, of a China slowdown. So. Well, there's a measured pace, I think, and no, I, I wouldn't be worried about it. I've heard today it's a structural change, maybe a cyclical change. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's still going. I wouldn't worry about it. There's no worry about this slowdown, because this slowdown is planned and intentional. And there's potential for growth for another 20 years. Just look at the countryside, the rural people, um, which is 700 million uh, large. And are still very low in GDP per capita and to turn them into wealthy, as wealthy as uh, urban people, it takes 20 years. And the Chinese government is in good control of the economy and they know what they are doing and they know what is the right thing to do. So I'm confident. The government is confident too. I think China is slowing down in, in, in spots. It's, it's patchy. Um, parts of the industry that we're involved in is, is very slow, residential for instance. But hospitality, resorts and hotels uh, have picked up. Um, I think it's favouring the firms who have been here longer, who have got more relationships and more experience. But generally speaking, I don't think there's anything to worry about because um, as one market dies, another grows. It's a great market and it's got a great future. Um, China's growth is stabilising, so it's to a more sustainable level, I think. and. Um, and that's an opportunity to take risk out of the proposition and it's a long-term relationship for Australia to trade with. So it is still a great opportunity and will continue to be for decades to come. <laughs> yeah, they've slowed to 7% growth in GDP. How's that? From 12 to 10 or something like that. No, it's really, it's absolutely dead as you can see. There's nothing happening. I was in China in late 2012 as one of the leaders of the financial services delegation which formed part of a massive 600 strong mission led by the Premier of Victoria, Ted Bailiu. This involved us being propelled from city to city by China's fast bullet trains, a great way to travel between cities like Beijing, Nanjing and Shanghai. Apart from numerous business meetings, presentations, seminars and business matching activities, we were treated to at least two large-scale whole-of-mission events hosted by the Victorian government. These included addresses by Ted Bailiu and local government officials, signing ceremonies and a showcase of local culture, dance and music. Here's Ted Bailiu's keynote address at the Oriental Mining Club dinner in Beijing. It is a joy to be here. It's a joy to be amongst those who are committed to doing whatever we can to maximise our economies, both here in China and obviously from our point of view in Victoria.
hope you've enjoyed this issue of Think Global with David Thomas and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.